Hi everyone, this video is going to be how I plaster a plasterboard and seal. Um, just like the give a big shout out to all the plasters and sprays out there. And um, just obviously, there's loads of right ways to plaster scenes and walls. Um, I'm going to give you my method here that works for me. So obviously, this video is mostly for DIYers and plasters coming into the trade and trying to learn it. So, that being said, the first thing to do, guys, is assess your ceiling. Make sure all the screws or nails are in flush. And make sure all the boards are tight, there's no bouncing or springing. Then you would scrim tape all the joints, including the corners. And then what I do is what I'm doing now in the video, is I cover all the joints, especially if they're... Uh, uh, they have a, a beveled edge on the boards which is for dry lining so I, I like to fill them out and cover all my scrims especially if you're only skimming the ceiling so I would give all the joints a quick coat um, but certainly I'd like to just say obviously if you are using stilts or hop up just try and keep the place nice and clear as you can see there's very little on the floor here just uh, actually a crate to help me get down off the stilts so obviously keep safety in mind at all times but um also i have my mix ready it's just in another room as i'm doing another ceiling but there's no point making videos of how to do two ceilings as this is based on trying to teach people who are only coming into the trade so i'm just coming in there i have my stuff up on a board that's at a high level so i can reach it so if you're using stilts or hop up you might want to have the bucket or the board set up so you can actually reach it and um, may also help especially as it may be the first scene you ever attempt to have the, the mix in the same room um, but just try not to spill any water or anything else it will be slippy and the finish will also be slippy I can also put a link to a video of how to mix plaster and how to plaster an already plastered wall but I'll put that probably in the description so now that you've assessed your ceiling you're happy that it's it's sound and ready for plaster cover all your joints and what you see me now doing is this is the first coat and your first coat should be about one to two mil thick your overall coat for there will be this will be two coats and your overall coat will be approximately three mil so it's not very very thick at all um, it is just a skim coat and it's called a skim coat for a reason um, also some plasters call this coat a scratch coat and that's because you're scratching it on um, obviously very tight so uh, obviously like I said there's loads of methods there's no there's loads of ways to do it um, but obviously there's loads of ways to do it wrong as well but the, the way I would recommend doing it is try and get two even coats even at about 1.5 mil each time um, and don't worry if you have to put a wee bit heavier if the board's slightly twisted actually in the corner I am I've had to go quite heavy as one of the boards kind of shot up um, might be a good idea guys as well to use a bit of a straight edge and just check all your angles you could maybe if, if you needed to you could bond out something if it was very badly off and have it straightened and ready to skim <clears throat> so yeah guys you just want to try and take, take reasonable bit amounts on your hawk that you can handle so you're not dropping it everywhere and um, this may be a slightly bigger ceiling than somebody who's just starting off would would prefer to start on maybe start on something a bit smaller maybe two boards or two and a half boards big it's just just so you you're comfortable with the size of the room and it won't set on you too much but the, the way i like to coat is i like to go left to right so you can see i started in the left corner filled it out and i'll work my way around um, also sometimes I'll, I'll work side to side and fill it in so that I, I can follow the same pattern when I'm traveling. This mix would maybe be a wee tiny bit heavier than for walls but 
the the lighter you mix your stuff, the easier it should be to spread, and the thicker, obviously, it'll take a wee bit more muscle. But the lighter it is, it won't go on just just quite as neat. You might leave a bit more lines and marks. Um, also, the trowel I'm using here is it's it's well broken. It's got a nice rounded edge, so that it doesn't it doesn't leave as many marks. And so what, once you have all your first coat on, guys, you might want to mix another fresh batch for the second coat. And then you, you don't have to wait terribly long before your second coat, but some plasters like to give the first coat a wee quick flatten in. But as I'm doing a few sealings, I just I coat it as neat as I possibly can so that I can just second coat straight onto it. But if there is any big lines and the stuff's starting to tighten, you might want to just give them a quick trial in before you you start laying on your second coat. Um, so again, start your second coat where you started your first coat so that the ceiling's all set and nice and uniform right round and it's tightened from one end to the other end so that when you're trialing it, you're following the same pattern as you laid it on. There's no point coming down to the bottom but it was only on and it'd still be soft and you're just going to end up with the far end where I'm at, at and I would tighten a lot quicker than towards the window here and the camera. So you'll want to keep keep going over this the same way that you started. <clears throat> Get into a bit of a routine, a bit of a bit of a pattern. Repetition is a big thing in plastering to keep repeating. Especially if it's working for you guys, keep repeating it. And sometimes you, it, you might not think it is working, but it might just be you just need a bit more time on it and You'll pick it up. So again, guys, just take reasonable amounts, and when you are applying this, you'll be sort of ironing it in as you go. Keep the trowel sort of flat. Just lift it off, maybe, maybe half an inch to an inch, and keep it in as flat as you can with your coating. And um, it's very important: the neater you coat, the neater your trowel will be the easier and the quicker you'll be able to trial it in and get all the blemishes out, all the lines, all the marks and easier to fill all the holes. So just continue right round. You, if, you, if you're right handed you might want to start in the other corner and work sort of the opposite side, side of me if, if you're left handed. And of course guys, um, which I haven't actually mentioned now, so hopefully you're not sitting pausing this and plastering scene, but it's obviously important after each mix to wash your drill and wash your hawk and trowel so that the stuff doesn't start tightening to it. So you're looking to obviously, like I said, keep it on as neat as possible. And if you do drop big bits and you're on stilts, it may be good to come down and clean that bit off um, as finish on the floor can be very slippy. Um, likewise, if you're using planks or hop-ups and you drop it anywhere, you might want to just give it a wee quick scrape up and a quick clean. Um, the more you clean during the job, the less you'll have to clean at the end and the easier it will be, especially as you're getting tired as the day goes on. So obviously scenes guys are quite tiring as all the work you're doing is above your head. So you have to think of having your, your water bucket and your, your stuff, everything you possibly can close to you so that you're you're just doing less wasting less energy basically and you can put more energy into your channel. Um, so now that this stage is optional and um, obviously most people will have a hot and trial if they're gonna to attempt to plaster. And I'm using a speed skim here, and basically I'm using it to sort of straighten the angles and flatten out any lines. And I find it it gives me a wee bit of a break off the stilts. And so basically I do this, guys. As soon as I have the seam coated, I drop off the stilts, give the speed skim a wet, and give it all a quick flattening. Doesn't take too long 
to get around the whole ceiling and I find that it helps the next trial but like I say this this stage is optional this stage is optional and um, you don't have, have to use the speed skim you can do this stage and I will kind of do this stage again anyway just for the tutorial and um, but you don't have to do a stage you can do it with just a hand trial but I do recommend that you try and check all your angles that you don't want any bumps or big hollows so this would be still the first trial here and um, you may just want to just wet, wet sort of down your angle and clean them as you go depending on what you're doing and um, obviously I'm working up against Sat cement here which does have a wee bit of suction now as you can see they're drying out there and um, so I do just splash them corners a bit just to, to stop the edges drying as they will dry a wee bit as they touch the sand cement but again back to the plaster of it and um, go back to where you first started all your coating again and you start there guys what I do is I'll pull this wee back line which I'm doing now I'm just pulling it out from the angle from the corner and pulling it out maybe probably about three foot four foot maybe um, and what you're doing now is you're ironing it in you're flattening in any lines and you're filling in any wee holes um, but like I said constantly even with this trial I'm trying to mimic a finished ceiling and trying to have it where if the ceiling does start to tighten that it's not going to take me long to get rounded and finish it off and um, so always have that in mind that the tidier you get it the easier it will be so back to the the process you can see i'm going to start walking it here in a minute and um, so what what you're also doing is you're chasing the lines and any moisture towards the the, the last angle and you're cre taking all the creases out all the lines out um, obviously if you have a broken in trial it will help um, it may, depending on how much it's setting you might need to just give the ceiling a wee dampen down so you can see what I'm doing, I'm chasing it in from where I started to where I finished so I'm following the same pattern over and over again guys you don't have to do it this way you can come from either side and trial the middle in but I like to pull the angle out and then as you see the way I'm trying here oh, everything that is now behind me is flattened in and it's sitting ready just to let it tighten up a bit for the second trial so when, when you do walk it, if you do walk it, if you have planks or hop up if you are trying it this same way you'll notice, you'll be able to look back on the ceiling and you'll see that it's a lot flatter than the bit in front of you and um, if you're not if that's not the case and there's still a lot of lines it may just be that wee bit too soft and you might want to just let it set depending on the size of the job you're taking on but obviously i'm doing another ceiling on the other side of the room so i'm in a bit of a routine where i'm just coming hitting that big ceiling and coming in hitting this wee ceiling and i'm just it's going like a clockwork i'm just coming right around back on myself constantly and um, so you can see that i'm pulling it from one angle to another angle and then I, I'm coming to that angle and I'm taking it away again so guys this here is now the second trial in period and again you're starting back back to where you started again and this time you will need water you would definitely need water at this stage this could be maybe well the particular stuff I use sets in about an hour and 15 minutes so by the time I trial this and trial the other one, I can come back straight back in and hit it again. So literally I'm on my feet and trialing non-stop for the whole hour, maybe two hours, depending on how many scenes I have on. Um, so again, you can see it's repetition. I've started back where I am. I'm doing the same thing. I'm pulling out the back angle. But this time there will be water and you will be opening up your trial a bit more so that the blade's cutting a slight bit more but not too much and um, you will want to wet down to lubricate the trial so that the trial doesn't tear the finish from the plasterboard so you can see it just worked from corner to corner and what you're doing is you have to take all your dirty water with you guys there will be some some water on the ceiling and some lines you're taking them all with you back to the other angle but where, where you, you'll flatten it in
you will notice over time if, if you are an apprentice and you're starting to do this maybe for the next the next two years in a row you will notice in time that you can sometimes you can look at the scene and know how dry it is um, but again the best way to probably know if something's ready is to touch it and you will feel the moisture has left it a bit and then it's ready to go and um, so you can't don't be scared to get your hands dirty guys and touch it and press it and see if you're leaving a mark if you're leaving a mark it may be just slightly too soft and um, you don't want to be over channeled at the same time and um, otherwise you can end up with, with different problems and um, so in this stage you can see i'm walking it and wetting it quite a lot does need a bit more water. I have my trowel out at a sharper angle so I'm getting a bit more cut and at this stage you really 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 must have no holes and no lines you have to have this have, have it right down to a T where the ceiling is pretty smooth at this stage and flat um, and again between trowels guys keep, keep your trowel and your tools clean as you go and if you are working around it a light there it will be a bit awkward um, you, you'll just do the same thing just just chase it and chase it around the light until you're on the other side of the light or wire it, there actually is a wire here and that's why I'm starting, starting in the middle so you don't want to leave any watermarks on the ceiling as they will not paint but there is another trial to come after this it's called this is the second trial and the next trial is the third wet trial and um, lots of plasters do leave it at that don't shine it and don't polish the ceiling which is it's perfectly okay guys but if you're just learning i would recommend you definitely give it a, a bit of a, a dry trial you don't want to over shine it but the dry trial will you'll be able to make sure there's no dirty water marks and any blemishes it'll just be that uh, that perfect little chance to get around the ceiling and see the quality so now that this this here is the quick polish you can see that this color in the ceiling now the ceiling is turning that that's another indicator that you're ready for a third trial and what else i need to do now is this ceiling is finished i'm just giving it a wee quick just a light polish and all i need to do is wet the blade of the ox trial and the ox trial, this this particular one i'm using is a super flex or an ultra flex and it's the same as a refiner I find this one can give you a wee bit more of a cut but um, they both do the same job they take a bit of the pressure out of your arm and your elbow um, but again you can do this stage with just a steel trowel which what that's what I did the majority of the work with um, was with a steel trowel uh, refine a stainless steel I would recommend if you are bad tools try and stick with stainless steel tools it will be they'll be a lot easier cleaned and maintained so as you can see I'm just keeping the blade clean and wet and just again just chase, chasing the ceiling back to the very end and th this will just take out any wee watermarks um, but at this stage you must have no holes you still probably could fill slight holes in the ceiling before it's just completely wet as you can see it's going brown it's that's okay guys don't panic when it starts going brown that's normal it's what's supposed to happen um, actually once I'm finished in about an hour's time when I'm finished this this whole ceiling will be completely brown and finished um, so yeah again guys if you do need to fill the holes and there's a bit of fat now is the time to do it before it's completely brown so that's that's more or less the ceiling done um, probably can do this this video again with a bit more detail maybe try and break it up further um, fine I'm probably waffled a wee bit too much here um, but hopefully it, it's a bit of a help to learners and DIYers ceilings are definitely not the easiest task to do but if you're doing a whole room you, you must start the ceiling do not start the walls start the ceiling as it will drip the walls you don't want to have finished walls and then drip them with plaster and a PVA or dirty water so same as painting guys start the ceiling then do the walls so this is the scene now it's completely brown that's normal that's okay it'll go brown and then it'll dry white 
ready for paint so hope it helps guys and let me know your thoughts